Is that Sean? Hey, what's going on? What's going on? Oh man, you look so relaxed. Oh, I I feel relaxed now that I'm I'm out. I can finally sort of relax and enjoy the season now. Sean, I you know what? I was rooting for you, man. You was the big guys, little guys, big guy. When you came oh, out there for those challenges, I was like, that's my guy. <laughs> I, look, I, I appreciate it. I was sort of so grateful to get to play play a second time and I was so set on winning, man. It just it, it just didn't it just didn't work out, you know, through I mean through, through my own fault because you know, you, you make mistakes along the way and you miss signs and stuff like that. So it's it's heartbreaking, but yeah, I can I can relax, I can enjoy it now and not have to worry about sort of watching myself on TV. Sean, you know what's funny is when you when you when you're sitting there on the couch and you're playing Survivor. What's the difference between sitting on the couch, playing Survivor one time, before you went back to play this time? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a, it's a lot different. Like watching, watching on the couch to actually sort of playing, I mean, they're completely two different things. And playing the first time as well, you sort of, you take all your learning from the first time and then you hope to sort of, you know, right your wrongs um from your previous season and and you go back out there with a fresh new plan and and stuff like that but it's still like i, I don't enjoy watching this I, I i enjoy watching my family and friends watch the season back and and the joy they get out of seeing it but i hate watching myself on screen and seeing myself talk and stuff like that so i can i, I know can it, it's, i know sean it's hard when i i had a i did season 41 in the u.s and just watching yourself up there and critiquing yourself now, if you were on the couch looking at Sean play this season, what advice would you have gave him? Um, just never get comfortable. Never, never switch off and stuff like that. Because I mean, you know what it's like out there. It's a twenty-four hour game, seven days a week for however long you're in, and it it is really mentally exhausting. But yeah. I think the people that go on to win, um you either get lucky and you get dragged along, but the ones who really get there and they deserve to be there, they, they never switch off and they never stop looking for those little, those little signs that if you do switch off, you'll miss. And there were certain, absolutely some of those that, that I missed and I didn't think hard enough about, you know, particularly just post merge when all those moves and flips were being made. And had I been more switched on and more astute, I could have, I could have picked up on them. Now you this season you also had a nice share of idols that you picked up. You kept one a secret. I'm always about hey, keep your idol a secret. Would you have changed that first idol and told everybody, or was keeping a secret part of your strategy? No, no. I I, I knew that if if I could find this idol without anybody seeing, it was always going to be secret. There was no way nobody was going to ever know about it nice. unless. I played it or unless I sort of had to, as I did for, for a move to try and convince um, somebody to sort of make a move and stuff like that. So that was, that was the plan from the start. I mean, last season when I found my idol, I found it with Daisy there. So somebody else was, was mm -hmm. there yeah. with me. So sort of different, but this time, as soon as we got that clue and as soon as we read that clue, like I had a pretty good idea of where it might be. So I was doing everything I could to try and, try and tell the other boys like i think it's <laughs> I didn't think it was and the first chance i got it was about we'd had the clue for about maybe two days and then the first chance i got to sort of sneak off on my own while everybody was sort of it was a bit, bit of a relaxing morning and everybody was like chilling in the tent having a bit of a laugh and um i sort of snuck off for about sort of 10 minutes had a really good look and found it and nobody else was 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 it within a hundred meters of me? So I was like, "This is just perfect. Like nobody's gonna know about this." You know, on editing, luck like you found it in five minutes. <laughs> so I don't know what it's like out there. I mean, not only not only is it like you're in a jungle, but the stuff is usually wrapped in something that's the same color as the jungle. So it is so so hard to find. And where where it was was just like people were. It was basically on the path like people were walking past it daily and it was like once you know where it was when when you learn where i told when i told them where it was they were just like oh my god it was just it, it was hidden in plain sight and i was we everybody was looking for days and days and days and, and nobody could find it and it was just right there so for sean sean went out there and said i'm about to get this for me now <laughs> sean you 
the heroes tribe, they were dominant. They even yeah. created a strategy so you could win your portion of any challenge, but they had to beat the rest of the actual heroes. So the villains were getting demolished. What happened? Yeah. Do, do you know what? I've, I've thought about this a lot. Um, last time I played, pre, pre-swap, we went to one tribal council. Mm. And, and then post-swap, I only went to two more. So I, I went into merge first time, having gone to three tribal councils, I think. Um and this time it was a similar story. Like we barely, barely went to tribal council, which at the time seems, seems great. But now that I'm looking back in hindsight, I think, yeah. I think there's a lot of merit to early on going to those tribal councils and really testing your relationships and solidifying those alliances that you've, you've set up. Um, and, I, and I do think while going to tribal council is, is, is risky, I think it sets you up better in the latter part of the game, going to tribal council early as a tribe quite often. Because it makes you feel uncomfortable and you know who's going to make you feel comfortable. Now, we, yeah. we see how everything is unwinding. But before we get to the actual tribal council for tonight, every tribal council had some twist to it. Last tribal council, Nina leans over and whispers to you, it's not you tonight. Now, I already talked to Shani yesterday. Did you think it still was going to be you, even though you kind of got the clear it's not going to be me last night? I was I was pretty confident because what what happened was yeah, you know, me and Nina were down the beach, and you actually see it in the footage, and it's mm. like yeah. where we know that we're going to have to leave for tribal council any second. And George comes screaming down the path, and he was like, "Sorry, Sean, but I've just got to talk to Nina really quick." And I was like, "That's okay, mate." And he went off with her, and. I didn't know what he was talking to her about, but I knew that he was making a move. Um, so I knew from that point I was pretty safe. And then at tribal council, Nina also told me like, I think we're good tonight because I can't tell you why, but just I, I was really, <laughs> nobody can tell was, you why at tribal council. <laughs> I was pretty confident because she didn't want to be seen to be whispering too much. That might let sort of Shawnee, Shawnee onto it as well. Um, you might want to, I don't know if you asked Shawnee this, but I think part of the reason George made a move on her was because she might have told him that she found that idol as well. She didn't say anything about telling anybody about the idol, nor did the edits let us know, but we do mm -hmm. know she went home with it. Yeah, so I think that was might have been part of George's reasoning. I'm, I'm not sure. I can't remember too clearly, but, um, you know, it was... Um, I feel like George did sort of strike at a, at a pretty good time. And I was, you know, warning people that it, it would happen and, you know, sort of make the move before the move gets made on you. Um, and Shani goes home, but I was, I was really comfortable that night. And that said, I was, I was comfortable the night I went home too. I really thought that I was good. Now you, you, let's talk about George. I met George at a charity event uh, in December. Nicest guy I ever want to met meet. King George, I was like, this guy's really nice. Matter of fact, we shared a room together. Now, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know his survivor game was like this. Describe George in one word. Yeah, we, you know, you, you, you sum it up really well as well because George outside of the game of Survivor is, is really good and he's good fun and he's a nice guy. George inside the game of Survivor is um, nightmare. All right, if you say <laughs> one word, I, I I mean that in every sense of the word because he's a nightmare because of how good he is at the game um, and how strategically um, far ahead of everybody he, at, he is in the game. Um, but he's also a nightmare because socially he's he's awkward and he'll kick you when you're down and he'll belittle you when you're at the bottom and he'll call you out and he'll you know say stuff and he'll irritate you and stuff like that. And it's part of his big TV game. And... Um, you know, if he does go on to the to the end, it is something that could ultimately cost him half a million dollars because you know how important that social aspect of is yeah. of the game. And while you sort of get to the end and you want to give you want to give the title and the money to the person who's played the best games and deserves it the most, you also want to give it to somebody that you want to give half a million dollars. <laughs> so you want to make sure that they, um aren't too strained and you haven't burnt too many bridges along the way 
it Survivor is a delicate game from jury, from player to jury. It's a delicate game. Now, if you could go back and change anything, what would it be in your game? I think a real a real key to my game and a key to my strategy going forward this time was Haley. Um, she's somebody that you know. A, as soon as I saw her, I was like, I, I need to. She's she's it. She's my shield. She's my way mm. forward. She's my way deep into the merge and stuff. Um, and I, I really wanted to play with her. And I let her know from from early on that you know I'm um, I'm going to look after you because I want to use you as my shield. Now. I also love Haley as a player and I really, really respect her mind for the game and the way she plays. And I didn't nurture that relationship enough. I think she knew that she absolutely knew that I wanted to keep her as a shield. Um, But I, but I don't think I was open and honest enough about the other reasons I wanted to play with her. And had I been, I feel like um, I could have got a lot deeper into merge because um she, you know she she was she was my ticket and she's got a great mind for the game and stuff and she was ultimately my undoing and that was my fault because i feel like i didn't nurture that relationship well enough and had i done that um you know post swap sorry post merge she perhaps would have told me that she was was flipping and to jump off the sinking. <laughs> she was she was about to get everybody <laughs> yeah. and um on top of that um, she might not have put my name down last night and maybe she would have put down Simon. So I just really wish I managed our relationship a bit better. I think, you know, that there were other mistakes I made and some of them I, I wish they worked out differently, but I still don't regret like my idle play to say myself instead of Sam. I don't regret that at all. Um, I wish if we had better information, I would have played it for Sam, but we were doing the best with what we had. So that's not, that's not a regret. Um, I'm, I'm, happy that I played the idol for myself and I sort of lived by that decision and, and now, stuff, but did you ship, so, did you ship Sam the beer? Well, it's hard. I mean, he's in the <laughs> ship things over there and stuff, but, um, did a really good thing. Like in, in our extras, you know, in our jury villa episodes and stuff, we'd sort of like, I'd got him a case of beer and, and passed it on to him and stuff like that. But I do, I do want to properly get him a case of beer and, you know, if I'm over ever over in the U.S. or he's over here, it's gonna be the first thing I do. Now, leading up to last night's vote for us, um, did you have a sense that it might be you, or did you have a sense that you know what, I can still turn this another direction? I was pretty certain it wouldn't be me because um, you saw a bit of George's chat um, yeah. with me where he had plans for me going forward. Um, that was actually that chat was a lot longer, so. His his plan was, um, and it, it, logically it made sense to me. It was, I he said, I know I've played the best game out here. I also know that nobody's going to take me through to the end. Mm. Um, so he said, it is vital for me to win that last challenge. So he said, I want that final three challenge to be me, you, and Jerry. He said, because you and Jerry are the people that I've best got the chance at winning that final challenge against. Because he said, if it's anything like the final challenges from the last couple of seasons, he's like, it's just not built for you. It's not built for somebody <laughs> that's six foot seven and has to be in an uncomfortable position for eight hours. It's it's built for somebody like Haley. It's built for somebody like Liz. Um, it's built for somebody like Simon and stuff. So he, he was, and he was quite genuine with that. Like he did want to sort of, take me through to the finish and then win the challenge and then take Jerry. That was, that was his plan. So I thought I can go along with this. It doesn't mean that I have to go along to the final three with him, but um, I'll at least say that that's what I'm keen to do. So I really, really felt because of that, like I was good. And you saw how F shocked everybody was in the vote last night. Like Haley didn't yeah. just blindside me, blindsided the whole tribe because the, the plan really was, split the votes on me and Simon and then revote and have Simon go home. So I was, um, I was really caught unawares as was everybody else. I, I will say AU survivor this season has been unpredictable at tribal council. You just never know what you're going to get. Now being one of the, the, the taller players, what was your favorite challenge and what was your favorite reward 
Well, the challenges were all so much fun. I mean, I love <laughs> I love the challenges. Oh, they're so good. I mean, the obstacle challenges were really, really great because, I mean, where else in life do you get to do, you know, those ridiculous obstacle courses that the the, the challenge team set up? I mean, it's just a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Uh, you know, twice if you get to play twice. But <laughs> so, um, Hey, look, I'm trying to get it twice. <laughs> what, what was really upsetting for me was the fact that um, – you know, I've, I've played professional sport for 12 years. I really love, I really love the challenge and to sort of have them. And I, I love Stevie. I think he's the sweetest bloke ever, but I was really looking forward to, you know, in those one-on-one challenges competing against Simon or competing against yeah. Geordie, really physical ones. And I didn't get the chance to do that. And that was really, um, that was really upsetting. And I completely get their strategy behind doing it and it ended up working for them. But you know, that's a bit of a regret that I didn't sort of get to, you know, have fun against Simon or Geordie out there, these big guys, and really sort of, <laughs> you know, battle, battle it out with. So that's a big regret. But I mean, I loved all the challenges. I it, it's just such a dream to get to do those those sort of things. Look, the villains had they they had they didn't want anything of you, Simon. It they, they was like Sean. He was like, no, we're gonna go ahead and let you win your side, and then we're gonna go in there and we're gonna we're gonna put the work on somebody else. Now, yeah. It's it's aired. You've had a chance to see yourself as a player that played twice now. Got to ask you, would you come back and play for a third time? I really, I really don't know. Like it would have to be a really tempting proposition because to, to leave my family again, it would be it would be really hard. Um, I've done it twice now for a total of of sixteen weeks. You know, with that sort of longer. AU version of the game it's unfortunately such a long time to be away um so it'd be a really hard decision to to leave them again the I think the only thing that would sway me um and, and I'm not saying I'd even be selected for this but if there was like an international version oh yeah yeah I think that would be really really hard to turn down just to play against some of the you know the world's world's best um would be great again i think there's a lot of players that would get picked before me but for some reason if that ever did come up it would be really hard to turn down well i look forward to seeing you across the mat uh in some future survivor you never know hey it's been a pleasure talking to you i know you got a slew of interviews today didn't want to see you quite yet i I wanted to see you get down at least a four at least a three but i know it had to be a great adventure Look forward to meeting you in the future. Uh, hopefully coming on the podcast or something. But, hey, it was a pleasure watching you play this season. Yeah, mate. I, I love the podcast. I listen all the time. So it was a pleasure to hey. sort of um, talk to yourself and, um, mate, enjoy the chat. Hopefully we do it again. Thanks. Hey, you have a good day.